and yes, yo friends, and welcome back to the Tozzy channel for more Ay you and a very happy Friday to you and a very happy birthday to this t-shirt. <laughs> In case you don't follow me on Twitter or wherever else I might have talked about this, I have launched a Redbubble store full of merch. Link is in the description if you want to check that out and if you want a twinsy with me, because I love being twinsies with people, so... If you do, I'm cool with that. After all this time of everyone telling me to listen to Modern Times, because everybody knows I'm going to love it, and you're so right, you're so right, we are going to do a full Modern Times album listen. We are going to split it up because otherwise we'll be here forever. So today we're listening to the first three songs from the album. I did check some of the comments and a bunch of people in the comments of all these videos were saying they're pretty good translations so hopefully we're going to be okay there. Over on Patreon today we will be watching some IU TV, some behind the scenes from Hotel de Luna. We are of course also watching My Mister, which is a journey, a journey, a journey, a journey. And since we're into a new album you can expect podcast episodes of lyric analyses of all the songs or most of the songs on the album. We'll see how many I can get through. Let's get into Love of B right off the bat for Modern Times. Let's go. Catch it. I love Gypsy Jazz. So good. Listen to that guitar. guitarist. I love that song. I just, I just love that. I just love Gypsy Jazz. I, I love Gypsy Jazz, no matter what. But the juxtaposition of the highly modern lyrics, like, I, I know you saw my text, compared to... Gypsy Jazz is funny because it feels like it is very distinctly of a time and no time at all at exactly the same moment, especially since it is more 
based in culture than it is of a particular era. There's something about it that feels very 40s, 50s, maybe into the early 60s. It makes you kind of want to swing dance and put on a pair of brogues. There's something very that about it. But the, the sheer perkiness and joy of the music that makes you want to dance and click your fingers and bop around and everything to a song that is about the cowardice of a partner who wants to break up but won't do it and so is just letting it drift until she gets tired and pulls the plug which by the way I have witnessed happen so many times so I laughed halfway through it because I have seen that happen so so many times it's so recognizable that story and those lyrics as is everything that she does and particularly relationship stories and modern relationship stories like being ghosted on any kind of social media or tech or anything that's such a modern experience that started with the millennial generation of having personal devices at the ready at all times the easiest possible way to communicate to communicate instantly to reach somebody instantly which means if they're not responding instantly you can't be like oh I was away from the phone yeah right you were like she said you know you really that busy you have a mode of communication in your pocket. So this perfect reality of a modern love story against this differently aged music, music that, like she does so often, is so perky and so fun and in such contrast to the lyrics. And also a, a style of jazz I think not necessarily everybody has been exposed to and I love that she's brought that into the consciousness of everybody. It's re super regional. You know, having it as your opening track of your album means everybody clicks play in modern times and they immediately get a dose of gypsy jazz. Some people probably were introduced to it if they ever saw the movie Chocolat with Juliette Binoche. You would have heard Gypsy Jazz there, the entire soundtrack was Gypsy Jazz. But other than that, I can see how people could go most of their lives without ever hearing it. I just happen to have spent an unusual amount of time in the south of France where there is a lot of Gypsy Jazz. <laughs> but otherwise, how delightful to talk about something so relatable with a style of music that is so super unusual. I just, everything about that song is delightful. Next one, which is Everybody Has Secrets. Let's get into it. Gotcha. This whole album makes me want to dance. Yes, let's go. Thumber time. Salsering under the desk. <laughs> I can't stop myself.
do you, how do you not dance? How do you not dance? Ah, 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 I die. A long time ago now, I used to do ballroom dancing and my favorite form of ballroom dancing was Latin ballroom. What I love so much about that style is it's the kind of music that you could strip it back and make it really kind of filthy and raw and just have it be, say, guitar and drums. But being composed the way it is with the violins and everything, it suddenly elevates it. It makes it grander and it was bringing to mind ballroom because Latin ballroom is the big, sweeping, grand version of the type of music that can be for just two people dancing in their living room or a crowd of sweaty strangers in a club or a elegant ballroom full of people wearing $4,000 dresses. That style, it puts it in the Copacabana. It puts it in a ballroom competition, which means it makes it, how do I put this? It puts a slight veneer onto it. It's a song about the fact that everybody has secrets and do you really think that you know what's going on inside somebody's head? Do you really think you know that person oh so well? No, everybody has secrets. Which is to say, what you see is not what you get. Presenting that style of music in its grandest form when its origins are a lot more ground level and earthy in the same way we present ourselves in one way or you only see somebody one way and behind all of that veneer is something else completely. It also, Latin ballroom, Latin music generally, is so sexy. There is something mysterious and sexy about all Latin music and so having that as the style you choose for a song of Everybody Has Secrets and if you knew what I was thinking it would make you blush. That mystery, that sort of heat such a fun and enticing choice for a song about people having secrets. Love it. What do we have next? We have Between the Lips, 50 centimeters. Let's get into it. Gotcha. Oh, darling, no.
that song following the previous two feels like because 50 centimeters it's a little longer than a ruler so mm, mm, mm. i have a bad sense of scale you're about to witness this <laughs> I just realized I was about to try and like eyeball 50 centimeters and realized I have no sense of scale. <laughs> however, however, 50 centimeters would be a good measure for how far you would hold somebody if you were dancing. And the previous two songs being so dancey, the gypsy jazz, and then the very summery type thing that we had there, it feels like in context of the other two stories, your kind of, the other two songs, it's not wrong to call them stories really, you're measuring the distance between where people hold each other and dance if you are being appropriate in the way you are holding the other person. Nice little through line going on there. That is really very romantic, swaying, quite sensual song. Its crescendo really hits when she then suggests what it is going to be like when they do finally kiss and, and has that line. It almost reads when you read the lyrics it's like reading a romance novel that you're sitting there going come on and now kiss <laughs> waiting for it to happen as you're reading chapter after chapter and the teasing of it all as you go along or indeed watching a k-drama and it takes until episode 12 for them to finally kiss and you're like for goodness sake <laughs> that's what it's it feels like reading that the tension is being built the promise of something more the hint of it with that line of my red bottom lip meets your top lip. Ooh, what a line. Ooh, ooh, hello. Ooh, hello, what a line. The swaying sensuality of it, what it does is, is build the tension for what is to come perfectly, beautifully, wonderfully, and make it special and central and mysterious the way the other two songs have a sense of kind of mystery about them as well. The whole album has a bit of a, a sense of mystery to it. Loving these. So we will have more of these to come. After we've done the album listen, we will be watching performances of songs from the Modern Times album. So feel free to jump in the comments and dump a load of links. Because <laughs> I know you will have them of uh, any music videos or performances that you love. If it's something that is the music shows like M Countdown, Inky Gaio, Music Bank, all of that sort of stuff, we can't watch it here on YouTube because it gets blocked. But if you like the performance, please do drop it in the comments anyway. We'll watch it over on Patreon if we can't watch it here. That's a mighty good start. I'm very happy with that. Yay! Thank you so much for joining me for another Fray You Day. Kamsanida, Sanigayo, and I will see you soon for more. And yo! Thank <laughs> you.